the first impression that comes to our mind about any college tall buildings big classrooms large lobby areas thick books it labs assignments class tests and projects nothing besides that every hour minute second spent here help us carving and shaping our persona cultivating innovative mindsets for the challenging world Learning is a lifelong process. Sharing knowledge, inculcating values of life, spark the innovative horizons of mind. Fun and frolic is the nature of every nook and corner here. A daily dose of thrill, we are sure to get here. A very good afternoon to everyone. I, Dr. Manasvi Maheshwari, Associate Professor at DME Media School, welcome you to the Baiji Varghese Lecture Series organized by Media School, Delhi Metropolitan Education, Noida, a premier college affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh Indraprasth University and approved by Bar Council of India. BG Varghese Lecture Series are organized in the memory of Mr. BG Varghese, a senior journalist and a winner of prestigious Raman Magasasya Award for outstanding contribution to journalism. Media School has taken this initiative to create much needed industry academia interface and provide students with the opportunities to interact with the stalwarts from media fraternity. These lectures are, are there to address the students with the latest trends and development in the media industry. Today, the expert of the day is Dr. Syed Mohsin Bani Hashmi, head of the postgraduate department of Commun communication sciences and media management, Kish Island International University. I would like to invite Professor uh, Amrish Saxena, Dean DME Media School and Director of International Relations DME to give his opening remarks and welcome the guest. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Manasi. Uh, so it's a matter of great pleasure that today we have Dr. Mohisin Bani Hashmi with us. Uh, he is kind enough that he accepted our invitation to talk to our students and deliver this special talk, this special lecture as part of BG Varghese's lecture series. He is a senior academic and researcher in Iran and he has a vast experience working at different levels and particularly he has been working in communication field at the cognitive level and his research area is also very varied. Uh, so our problem was how to choose a topic which could be more relevant, which will be more beneficial to our students. So that is how on our request, he decided on such a topic wherein the uh, communication can be simple and effective. And I'm sure that with the, whatever content he will be sharing with us today, our students will definitely be benefited and will definitely get to know something extra, something new beyond what we normally understand about communication and different dimensions of communication. So we are looking forward to have a very fruitful session. I once again welcome uh, Dr. Mohsin Bani Hashmi in this session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It is my immense pleasure to introduce you all to our today's special guest of BG Varghi series, Dr. Mohsin Bani Hashmi is an Iranian thinker and academician. Dr. Mohsin is a full-time university professor in Department of Media Management and Cultural Management in the South Campus of Azad International University and the head of Postgraduate Department of Communication Sciences and Media Management, Kish Island International University. He is also the part-time university professor in Neurocognitive Sciences University. Dr. Mohsin received his PhD in Media Management from Iran Azad University on the dissertation Persuasive Methods in TV News, a case study on Iran News Network. He has taught persuasion, news writing and journalism, general communication sciences, media psychology, psycholinguistics of news and media, persuasive communication, content and discourse analysis, analyzing TV and radio program, imagination, programming for media, public relations, advertising methodology, among others at the university level to masters and PhD students. He has presented various lectures and presentation at local and international conferences and has published several articles and research papers in both Farsi and English. We are honored to have you today, sir. Over to you, we look forward for your session. Well, uh, 
thank you everybody uh, I, I don't know what can i say when when i feel myself at my home because i i think india is my second home and uh, i'm really happy to be among you first i would like to express my heartiest gratitude for being among you in uh, uh, delhi metropolitan uh, 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 university and uh, second i'm uh, really happy and I should appreciate, express my appreciation for uh, inviting me in this meeting. Uh, uh, Officer Saxena warm invitation was very uh, important for me. So I hope that we can have uh, one hour uh, uh, informative and uh, good uh, uh, to, to talk to each other and and uh, and feel that we are opening new doors toward the, sci the scientific areas all over the world. Uh, well, uh, I'm really happy because because uh, I told you that India is my second second uh, uh, country. I used to be there for a while, and I stayed in Mysore. It it was my my one of my very beautiful time in uh, in my life because of uh, the whole friendship uh, and uh, hospitality all over the india including when i was staying in delhi uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen all the students in in uh, uh, delhi metropolitan uh, politan education mm. Today, we are going to talk about new era of media uh, from the aspects of alienation. And here, I'm going to ask you uh, if uh, any of you are familiar with this sort of, of alienation that is happening in this new era of media. Uh, when we talk about alienation, we have the other side, uh, which we can see in reconciliation to communication. We can see that uh, we are among the waves of uh, digital life, but we don't know uh, even if we have decreased or increased our communication lifestyle. Uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, for many years, media has been our leaders. It's a long time that media are leading our lifestyle. But uh, uh, despite of the situation that media has in our life, for example, media told us to to think how to how to think, uh, how and what to buy, how to accept or resist, and what to accept or resist. But recent years, we are much more surrounded by the media waves because of the digitalized life. In the past, we have had medias in our lives, but these years, uh, we are surrounded by the waves of media. Here, I'm going to use a few metaphors for better understanding of these uh, worldwide huge phenomena. <clears throat> From the time I started teaching, I understood that using metaphors in teaching can be uh, more effective in learning. And I understood that uh, metaphors can students uh, can make the students much more uh, be closer to what we are talking about. So here I'm going to use metaphors for starting my presentation from the beginning. Uh, let's think together, what are the following metaphors stand for? Wave, ocean, surfing, surfers, and eye contact. Uh, maybe you would like to, to write them down or, or think later, but uh, I'm going to use them and I'm going to use these metaphors in, in my presentation. Here, I'm going to tell you that we are beyond the wave, but I'm not talking about water waves. 
we are talking about digital wave. We are beyond the wave and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, when we are among the wave, we think that what should we do? Especially when the wave are quite huge to let us to do something or not. What do what to expect beyond these digital waves in our new new life in in the era of digitaliz digitalization in this world? Here I want to tell you that this question has part of the answer in itself. The assumption that we are in the middle or under huge wave already, a wave created by media. So. Uh, what should we do when we are among the way? I think surfing might be the first uh, item that we can think about when you are among, uh, beyond the wave, when you are among the wave, when you are under the wave, the best uh, way that you can uh, act is surfing. So, uh, in this digitalized uh, situation, in this digitalized world, uh, when we are among the wave, when we are under the wave, when we are beyond the wave, we are going to forget many things in our lifestyle. When riding a vicious horse, it says that when riding a vicious horse, hold the saddle tight and forget racing. This is what happening to, to our life. We have forgotten our real lifestyle. So uh, this, is, this is the problem in our new life. We think that we have increasing our communications together. But is it right or not? So why we are much more alone in our life, despite that we are talking about a lot of communication all over the world, the wave and surfing metaphor leads us to another metaphor, media ocean. We are in the media ocean life and a lot of media are surrounding us. And I can, I can use this metaphor as this situation, this phenomena, and uh, it is a, a limitation for our natural life. What are we doing in, uh, what are, sorry, what are we doing in this wavy ocean of digital communications? We are surfing. I told you that we are surfing, but we know that many of us are not very professional surfers. Despite that we are the owner of media or the audience of media, many of us, are not professional surfers. But even if we are all expert surfers, there comes another big question. What is that? How do surfers communicate with each other while surfing? Because when you are surfing, you can't look around. You can't be aware of others. You can't communicate with others. You can't make eye contact. It is very difficult for us to feel other people because we are surfing in our media type life. So uh, we have another metaphor here, which is eye contact. When I say eye contact, I mean uh, communicate with each other. I mean understand each other. I mean understanding diversity. I mean, let others to live like, like ourselves. And when I say eye contact with each other, means we have the, the, the we have the uh, something in our mind that we give right to others to live. The waves of the digitalized media ocean move, move so fast that we cannot stop and look back. This is another problem. Everything is changing day by day. 
and we are thinking what is going on in human life. In the past, when we talked about generation, the distance of two generation, we were talking about 15 years or 20 years or 10 years. But now we can name differences uh, or uh, two different generation uh, with two years. Sometimes you can see one uh, four years old kid is quite different with 10 years old kid. Let me tell you something. All of us in this meeting is, uh, has been engaged with uh, non-digital life partially. I'm not sure uh, the, the uh, age range of the people who are in this meeting. But uh, some of us, many of us, has been engaged with non-digital life. But this new generation start everything with digital life, and these waves are forcing us to surf. And, and waves for surfers where to surf. So the bus is waves. We think that we are the bus. But the waves force us where to surf, uh, how to surf, and who to surf with. Uh, I hope this metaphor uh, don't confuse you. When we talk about uh, media wave, when we talk about digitalized wave, we are talking about uh, our new prison, in my opinion. I'm using digital life. And right now we are among this digital life. But we need to, to see the, the matter from the other side. Has media digitalization enabled us to fulfill our longest longest standing job? Sorry. Our uh, sorry. Uh, has media digitalization enabled us our, uh, to fulfill our longest standing job of persuasion better than, than before? Here, I'm going to start another word uh, maybe some of the students are familiar with, persuasion, which used to be one of the most important factor in media, media type life, persuasion, was very important in journalism, in communication, and all the relation between human beings. How do we, as uh, an isolated servers, uh, surfers on the digital wave can persuade an isolated audience to watch us or listen to us? Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about persuasion. Uh, uh, <clears throat> When we talk about persuasion, I mean the positive side of persuasion. I know that there is some negative point of view about persuasive, persuasive communication or persuasion. But here, I think persuasion has very strong contact and connection with freedom. Let me tell you something. When you have different options, you prefer to start persuade people to use or to choose one of them. So from my point of view and uh, toward my background and my research background, we think that pers positive persuasion is connected with freedom of human, human being. Because when you have a basket with different fruits, for example, orange, banana, and apple, you need to persuade your audience to choose one of them. But if you have just one fruit, you don't need to persuade others. This is why I am talking about positive side of persuasion. Rather, there are some people who don't believe on the positive aspects of persuasion. In the past, all the media was able and was professional to persuade their audience. 
because they were able to communicate completely. But in these days, in these recent years, we are so fast. We are becoming isolated people in the media. And also we have isolated our audiences. This is why when we are talking about uh, communication, we just talk about communication. We haven't been communicating with each other for a long, long time. And maybe in another session, if we talk about Corona and, and, and COVID that change our life in, in all over the world, COVID start to learn to, to teach us that we have to change our lifestyle. I, I have many things to, to talk about COVID, but later we can uh, time to talk about that. So persuasion has a positive connotation, but uh, we are not necessarily positive. Sometimes we are not very positive in our media. And uh, we uh, wish to, to force our audience to watch us. This is our goal all over the world, no difference everywhere in all media, in all communication organizations and, and every, everybody would like to force the audience to, to watch them. We make our audience to watch us, but we are not sure that we have persuaded, persuaded them or not. Uh, the speed of, per, uh, of digital media has removed the ability to use persuasion that we use in traditional media. So I think, and based on our researches, we think that uh, persuasion is becoming weaker and weaker in our recent digital, digital lives. Uh, so here we can say that we have changed our audiences to be much more isolated. The global audience is becoming more and more isolated. And uh, everybody knows that. For example, in the past, I'm not sure about the situation in India, but I tell my students that when, when you uh, in the past, when you went to the doctor office, you start talking with, with the other people in the office, talking about your problem, talking about your uh, disease, uh, sharing information. But what you do right now, when you go to the doctor office, everybody start clicking the mob mobile and playing with the mobile. What about when you are in the bus? What about when you are in the train? In the past, you start sharing your emotions. You start sharing your information. You start to be a source of toleration, to be patient for others' problems, to be patient for others' uh, uh, disease and difficulties. But what you are going to do right now you're just playing with your mobile. Here, I'm going to start talking about our isolation. One big problem in our life is our isolation. When we talk about our isolation, we are talking about media people isolation. There is another approach that we, all, we are all isolated too. I'm talking about media professions. I'm talking about uh, everybody who is playing in this theater scene in media. And uh, we have some time to talk more about this. Why our digital skills have made us isolated more than ever. We becoming more expert, but we becoming more isolated. We are too fast. We haven't enough time to meet each other. We haven't enough time 
to see each other, to understand each other, and to talk with each other. Our main reason for this alienation is cutting expenses and lowering our budgets. However, uh, there is, uh, however, there is another overlooked reason for this. Maybe we have been in love with digital technology. We are fallen in love with digital technology. And we think when we are engaged with te digital technology, we are a uh, much more important person. And as I know, uh, Indian culture, sometimes young people in, in, in your society like Iran think that old people who are not enough connected with digital life are not good people. They are not very important. So we have a cheap look toward our background, toward our past generation. This is not good. Because when we are talking about India or Iran or some countries like that, we are talking about long, long time, uh, centuries and, and civilization and culture. So uh, we are spending under the pretext of saving. We think that we are saving, but sometimes I think about myself that, that uh, I am living in digital life, so I uh, may have enough time to do many things that I like to do. What I can see that I haven't enough time. I'm just faster. I'm just under too much stress. I don't know if you are the same as me or not, but, but, but I haven't any more time for living, except we are living in very modern and civilized uh, technology. The babes are keeping us apart day by day, and we are, uh, uh, completely uh, in this, uh, we, we are beyond this magic situation. Now, I'm talking with, with, with the students, how can we as an isolated journalist persuade an isolated audience to watch us, to listen to us, to, uh, to, listen, to listen to us and to understand us? We are isolated, our, our audience are isolated. And uh, in this situation, we can see we have uh, hypnotized our audience. They'll watch us anyway. They are watching what they need in, in television, for example, but it is not real life. In this picture, you can see that they need, they need food. And they think that they, they have food, but they haven't. It is not real life. What are we doing in our universities, in our departments, in our media organizations, with the audience, with human being? Sometimes, for example, I... Uh, when, when I talk with my students, I tell them that you are seeing some poor people in television and you cry with them, but you don't anything because you are lying to your brain and your brain thinks that you are engaged with that situation, but you are not. You are just watching something. We carried out some interesting research at uh, the Media University in September 2012 Several families were picked out and uh, asked not to watch television for two weeks. Their social behavior was then carefully observed. We checked them every day. And uh, we had three important questions in this, in this uh, survey. One, how do families respond to the idea of taking away, away the, their TV sets from them? Two, what behaviors take shape without television? Three, what other alternatives do they come up with? It was wonderfully surprised reasons in this research 
And recently I'm planning to re-establish re this, this research because it is, it is something about 10, 10 years ago and I'm, I'm checking, I, I need to check the information again. During the first three days, the families looked very idle, not knowing how to do without television. But afterwards, it developed new communication patterns such as sitting together, inviting friends, inviting relatives, barbecue nights, reading, and last but not least, walking and eating out. But look at this. <clears throat> Due to this research in our university, the TV less patterns, which happened in two weeks, disappeared the minute the TV sets returned. And it was very uh, strange for myself because I was, I was planned for this. They returned so triumphantly. I, I, at that time, I was thinking that at least some of them will, re will remain. But immediately, everybody returned to TV sets. And it is worth mentioning that we ran into ex extreme difficulty finding families who would agree not to watch television for two weeks. We noticed that very few can think being separated from their TV sets for even a short period of time. We take a long time to find people who agree to join our research for not, not watching television for two weeks. And uh, I have a very simple but important question here. How do we, as media people, as communication people, as journalists, feel when we hear that people can't barely do without us for even a single day? What are you thinking about yourself when you see this situation? We must have been proud of ourselves. No, no, because we are, we are separate, separating our population from natural life. We'd better not be proud. Such extreme attachment to media is a global concern, a type of attachment does, that does not necessarily urgent needs. Uh, maybe you have seen a lot of uh, films about uh, accidents that you are checking your mobile for what? For very simple things and you will uh, kill someone. And uh, we call this in Iran media addiction. We may want to rename this attachment as media addiction. And we are working on this. And we have, we have found some, some solution for solving the problem. You might say, what we need here is media literacy. But how can we talk about media literacy when we barely know what it is? Who among us claims to know media literacy in a clear cut way? Tell me. Who? Uh, here I want to uh, introduce four categories for media literacy. And uh, uh, I want to tell you that there is different uh, approaches toward media literacy. In the top, you can say the first, first part which some define media literacy from a technical point of view. There is a huge population who love technology. And when you talk with them, they are talking with you about uh, new technology in, in media, media life. And from their side, media literacy in how you can understand technology. The second group are the people who, when you are talking about media literacy with them, just say, oh, yes, media literacy is very good. And you should think about the audience. All of them pass the ball toward the audience. So they look at it 
through the lens of the audience. And still some scholars interpret media literacy on the basis of general public's uh, approaches in communication. When you talk with the scholars, they say this theory and that theory. And who are the fourth group? They are ourselves. They are ourselves. The fourth part of media literacy is the media, media people. We have forgotten them. And we think that media people doesn't need to, to have media literacy. And this is a big problem in our life. So uh, uh, when we uh, talk about uh, media literacy in our population, in our university, in our organization, we can see that uh, the lowest, the lowest media literacy uh, group is media people. We have done a research and we worked on uh, different uh, society groups and we find out that uh, uh, a lot of people who are working in media, in communication uh, uh, departments, they have lower media literacy information. Maybe they think that they are in the safe side and they think themselves and, and they imagine themselves as a godfather of, of communication. Usually when you are working as a journalist, you, you feel yourself as a godfather of communication and literacy in media. So we need to think about ourselves. Where are we standing? Perhaps you have heard the, perhaps you have heard the story of the elephant in darkness. Here is the Iranian account of the story. I, I, I know that you have in India this, this story too. A group of people were about to discover an elephant for, for the first time, albeit in dark room. I'm talking about media literacy, and this is another metaphor. Once in the room, each of them touched the part of the elephant's body. This is what we are doing with media literacy. They revisited their marvelous discoveries outside the room. The person who had touched the animal's legs spoke of the elephants as a giant column. His friend who had got hold of the poor elephant's trunk insisted that it looked like a huge water pipe. And the third person was sure that what he had felt has been a gigantic fan. He must have touched elephant's ear, of course. This is what is happening in media literacy life. You know why? Because when we are about media literacy, look at this picture. These approaches are divert, are forcing each other to be divergent. They are not going to add the energy to, to add the efforts together. They are uh, neutralize themselves. This is the problem. And can't the elephant story be a model of what we perceive as media literacy? Can we perceive everything in the, in the uh, same way every time? Can we do this? Can we perceive uh, uh, all cultures, nations, and their reactions through one same lens? India is very good country to understand this. It is quite difficult. Iran is the same, of course, because, because of the diversity. Iran is also a multicultural uh, community, multicultural country. So we, can, we can't do this through this, this same lens. And here, I'm going to tell you above all do we have right to do this or not? To tell our audience what is good and what is bad. This is another problem. This is misunderstanding of media people all over the world. And we as academic people 
should solve this problem and should ch change this situation? How can media literacy remind us of uh, our right to think and live out of the box? We are in the prison of digitalization. And how can media literacy touch on love for humanity and nature? Uh, how can our media type, me media literacy give us a pulse for active thinking and socializing? And finally, what is our media's response to the human being's loneliness, moral confusions, and communication crisis in this new era of civilization? Elsewhere, uh, when we were working, uh, while working on the brain's function with regard to media, we learned that the same area in the brain which reflects addiction to media exposure and computer games is the same area that responds to drug addiction. This is, this is a very new researches in, in cognitive sciences and brain sciences. So uh, here I am going to, to open another field for the students that how does the media affect its audience? To answer this question, we need to know answers to the following questions. One, where the media is felt? Two, where the media is understood? Three, where the media is processed? Four, where the media is stored? Five, where the media is read again and recognized again? We are talking about the brain. When we are talking about media, we have to deal with a unique organ called central nervous system. Here, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, this uh, field, which might be new to some of you or uh, might not. Media and cognitive sciences is one of the professional multidisciplinary major in our new journalism scientific fields. Uh, here you can say you can see one of the, the labs that usually clients uh, go in a tunnel. This is fMRI uh, <clears throat> observing. We have sound and visual stimulation, and we can see the maps of brain when brain process the information from the media. In Iran, we have done some of these sort of researches, and one of them, which I was the supervisor, we, we worked on uh, uh, aggression films and gently films, and uh, we checked the physiological and psychological reflex of our clients. And it was very interesting for us that what we are doing in media is uh, sometimes, uh, uh, horrible is sometimes very bad to our audience. But how does the so-called media literacy respond to these findings? Should such literacy focus on what to broadcast or how to influence? Let's be a bit braver. Let's be a bit honest together. Uh, Quite the contrary, I believe that digitalization is changing and shaping our media, as well as our lifestyle and will continue to do so in the future in so many unpredictable ways. But let it not misshape our persuasive nature. Persuasion, as I told, is uh, completely connected with freedom of human being. And uh, we are in this spread need of interactive persuasion more than ever before, persuasion based on respect uh, for our audience and its culture, based on respect for human values and nature. This is the new uh, goal of uh, persuasion from my point of view, 
and uh, sometimes I have difficulty for changing the, the pictures, sorry. The basis of media literacy is communication literacy. And the basis of communication literacy is communication quotient. I'm going to introduce another term in this presentation. For many years, what was, uh, what was considered as an indicator of human intelligence was intelligent quotient. We know that as IQ. We all, we all pass our life with IQ, talking about IQ. Gradually, scientists uh, find that another important factor is in our uh, um, psychological life, which they call it emotional quotient, which is quite important. All the students of media, communication, journalism, should know the details of these scientific sides of communication. But let me tell you something else. Today, another key concept has entered the word scientific literature, and that is communication quotient, a broad concept that directly refers to the main difference between humans and other creatures. So we can see that communication quotient, communication intelligence is much more important than others. And here I'm going to talk about fulfilling the mandate of media literacy. When we talk about media literacy and fulfilling the mandate, uh, I want to say that this mandate lies in the power to persuade. By persuasion, I mean cultural persuasion. You can say uh, uh, cultural adaptation or something like this. Uh, let me do something with these icons. A persuasion that welcomes the audience sincerely and uh, uh, draws the maps of our lives with the strokes and uh, logic and culture. To offer this sort of persuasion, to offer real persuasion, media need to be more than tools. And when we pass the media to, to the political and economic, economical side of world, we can do this because, because politician and economic people use media as a tool. Media should be uh, dependable and trustworthy for our audience. What our audience needs is the right and the power to manage their relationship with the media. This is a right for our audience. But there is another problem. We are uh, arrogant. When you are working in media, or when you are getting ready to be to go inside uh, a media organization, gradually you will be arrogant. We got to help our audience to get their rights. But first of all, we need to uh, get rid of our media type arrogance. When you are in the top part of information, Gradually, you will be arrogant people. This arrogance has roots in our power. We are powerful people, and we need to tame our power and understand that audiences are not our toys. The lifestyle advertised by us should be reoriented to the future of mankind. And the future of mankind lies in the minds of our children who despite having various cultures, languages, and religions need to care for each other all over the world. But even cultural persuasion does not directly translate into media literacy. Divergent audiences can hardly be persuaded. Audiences 
need to think of common interests and concerns. And for this, we need, we, we have to lead them. We as media people have to lead our audience to uh, commonalities. We should care for human commonalities. And uh, let me ask you a question. Are political and economical differences among the world leaders equal with cultural differences among nations? A new wave of wars, not, not, not uh, hard wars, sometimes soft wars, is threatening nations in the world. And the digital wave can and must pretend and prevent of them. The digital wave should prevent of the hard and soft wars all over the world. We must initially understand and then lead the strong positive power of media. Here I'm going to show you a very simple model of how media persuasion can change uh, the di diversities in a population toward cohesiveness. You can see here, uh, for example, in India, uh, in India population or Iran, uh, we have cultural diversity, linguistic diversity, religious diversity, and this is the media persuasion uh, mission to change all of these diversities toward some sort of cohesiveness, which make a nation united together. And last but not least, perhaps we ourselves should learn more about literacy. not just media literacy, but also human literacy, and most importantly, life literacy. We ourselves need someone to teach us the real love lit literacy all over the world. We need to focus on our commonalities rather than our differences. And uh, I'm not sure that we are trained for this sort of things. Uh, and here all we need is uh, an eye contact while surfing what was eye contact communicate with, with each other understanding each other uh, deep understanding of the uh, diversity and multiculturalism we are surfing among the wave of digitalization. And we need to train for communicate with each other more than the past. This is hard, but possible and necessary. Thank you everybody. And uh, sorry if uh, I was not able to uh, communicate enough with you. Uh, I'm sure that you uh you are capable to understand my speech because of your uh, smartness and uh, that's all take care have a good afternoon i'm i'm here to join what you are going to talk about thank you thank you so much sir and of course we were able to uh, see understand the interesting facts which you shared and it was, trust me, it was an amazing presentation and the metaphorical representation of digitalization in media was just overwhelming. The way you explained the concept of persuasion, isolation, digital wave, media literacy, it was astonishing. I, we all enjoyed the session. And now I open the house for question and answers. Uh, students can post their questions in the chat box. Some of them have also messaged me directly. So uh, we'll take a few questions related to the uh, presentation. So there's one question, which as an academician, even I would like to know, like you said, that there is a lot of, you know, digital dependency, people are getting isolated, they are not, you know, they are dependent on the media. And that's, that's the problem we are also facing as a faculty, especially with the COVID times. 
now everybody is into digital world they are more comfortable in on in their on you know looking at the pcs and attending sessions like that and they are you know they are studying in the same class for a year or so but still they are you know they are in isolation they are not interacting with each other so this covid has you know this covid time has made it really really impossible for everyone so how to bring them back to the life or your message to the students who are listening to you right now that how they can just try to come back to the life where they can interact and you know in the physical space and the importance of interaction in the physical space what is your suggestion for you know all of us uh well if i understood uh enough uh let me tell you something about covid before covid when someone go to grandmother and grandfather's home, you uh, would say to your children, go and kiss your grandpa or grandma. And when COVID come, you say, stop going and don't kiss, don't hug. Listen, COVID is a teacher from my point of view. It is dangerous. No one like it, but from my point of view, COVID is a, a teacher because COVID is showing us what is important in our life. In our university and the university I'm engaged with, we are, actually we are uh, beyond the wave like you, like everybody all over the world. No one can run uh, from this situation. But we are starting working on lifestyle researches. We are starting on human relationship. We are starting to work on different surveys, including your relationship with yourself, knowing yourself, understanding yourself. And second, we are working on your relationship with others. For example, we, we think that we need one hour to be with each other to know each other. But I can say with just one second, we can, we can affect each other. When you are in, in, a, in an elevator, in, in the lift, uh, you can look at each other. Your smile is a message of, of peace, a message of freedom, a message of understanding each other. So the second research part to, to be, um, better in, in a new defending toward this digital life is understanding your relationship with others. And the third part, the third part from my point of view is uh, your relationship with the nature. This is a problem. As your digital life is growing up, your relationship with the nature will decrease. We should work on this. We, we have to stop saying it is not very important things for university. We should start to make the families joining to the, to the nature, in everything in the, in, the, in the nature, water, the sky, animals, plants, and uh, uh, the, the, fourth, the fourth part for my side is uh, the creator from any side of, of religion religion believes everybody thinks that there should be a creation and a creator and uh, our students need to think that things are not as simple as we think everything is is, is uh, sometimes complex and covid showed that with just Five, five gram of virus, the whole population all over the earth can be die. All the universities closed, all the ships stopped, all the airplane stopped, all, all the trains, everything. And after two weeks, after two weeks, we start to uh, behave like each other. Everybody wear masks. Listen, everybody wear masks after two weeks. When we can do something that after two weeks, we do something the same all over the world. 
why can't we do something to be kind with each other all over the world after two weeks? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there's one question in the chat box, which they talk, uh, it's about, it's from Mudita, Mudita uh, Raj, assistant professor at DME. She is asking, the pandemic has brought in what we can call the new normal and the ecosystem of education has changed. What do you feel in the way forward for media education across the border? Uh, well, I'm not the person that, that have enough power to change it, the educational system. I'm just a teacher. In the past I was, but, but right now, no. But uh, when I see my colleagues, I start talking like this. I, you, you know, I'm, I'm an academician for, for something about 34 years. What I talk, I talk like this, simple and, and very energetic. And I think we need to change our educational system towards humanity. This is the time that media should understand they are uh, uh, produced to work for, for people. Media are living people and media need to stop this sort of leadership. We, we need to, to uh, uh, understand that our new communication is necessary for renewing our lifestyle. We are uh, badly go through being alone. We are separate from each other. We don't know each other. And propaganda is surrounding everybody all over the world. So I'm not going to know you. I'm going to listen to propaganda and, and know you from that side. This is a problem. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just, let me tell you something. Maybe, maybe some of the students know the, the Rumi, one of the Iranian poets, the, we, we call him Maulana. Uh, and Rumi says, do you know what is the problem? The problem is that the, your speech, your speech, your whisper can say what is going inside you. But the problem is I can't understand your speech. Do you know why I can't understand your secret? Because I can't understand your speech, your whispering. So our secret is not far from uh, our whispering. But the problem is our eyes and our ears are not capable to understand. We are so fast, so we have no time to understand each other. We are not going to wait for each other like the past. This is the problem. For changing the educational system, I think we need new generation. I'm thinking about young people. Sorry, professors, but I'm seriously thinking about young people. This is why I left my job when I was dean of the university. And uh, one of my students say, hey, you can, you can continue staying while you are living. I said, I'm going to continue my teaching, but I'm going to make the situation free for your, your uh, brain because, because you are uh, uh, responsible for thinking about the future. So my suggestion is let young people to come uh, to the ground, they can understand. They are enough energy. They are enough kind. Don't think that the only kind people are yourself. Don't think that the only people can understand are, 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 are ourselves. So uh, I think changing the educational system need to uh, re review our problems. We have to see our new problems. We, our problem is not metaverse from my point of view. Our problem is our distance from each other. Thank you, sir. This question from Anisha. 
she wants to know how far do you feel propaganda changed in context of media alienation and inclusivity uh, uh if i understand uh quite well i think too much uh in present time propaganda is everything all over the world in all media this is uh, do you know why when when i talk about uh cognitive sciences and media about humanity and media about nature and media my goal is not let politician and politics to be to be in the top of this story and unfortunately the the polit politics is in the top of this story all over the world all over the world including my country everywhere i'm not going to separate somewhere from others and uh, maybe students uh, are familiar with the with the theories and approaches of Edward Brenes. I, I suggest them to have a look to Edward Brenes uh, ideas about media. This is the re real media of, of these days all over the world that you should force people. When I talk about persuasion, I'm not forcing you. I'm talking about freedom. Hey friend, I have different things here. But I suggest you this one is better. But uh, propaganda is uh, managing uh, all the media all over the world. And the connection of economic economy is very important in media. Politic is very important. Power is very important. But I am sure, I am sure, I am sure, even if I am alive or not, population will change the future and this young generation this this nice students who i don't know them they will change everything all over the world including iran and india thank you thank you so much sir and i have more questions but time doesn't permit me to take more questions i would like to take liberty of emailing these questions to you and asking answer from you so that we can you know share that with the students because they have a lot of questions and some of them want to know about that there are positive aspects of media also that you know there have been cases where media has brought in people together even the online you know uh, protest and they have joined hands so there are a lot of questions related to that but right now i would like to hand over to professor Shushmita bala for concluding remarks over to you ma'am thanks dr mohsin bani um, hashmi uh very, very uh, wonderful session because it's a different level in understanding communication. In this digital age, how persuasion works, this was explained by you in such simple terms. How has technology changed our lives? Yes. Despite the fact that the media has mesmerized us and we all feel that we are engaged in a certain situation shown on the screen. In fact, there is no such case. They are simply watching. What a beautiful analog, Dr. Mohsen. Media has thrown us into isolation. Yes, we are living in a world which is alienated. Media has taken us to a world which is unreal. Thanks, Dr. Mohsen, for sharing with us the finding of your research. Then, Dr. Mohsen, you talked about media literacy. I agree with you that media literacy is the need of the art. It is necessary to meet the challenges posed by digital, digital media. Thanks, Dr. Mohsen, for explaining to us the connection between media and cognitive sciences. Thank you, sir, for unfolding so many new dimensions to us. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Thank, Thank you, you so professor. Much. Thank you, professor, for everything. Thank you for letting me to come to your home. And just one sentence that uh, it is a new sometimes, uh, maybe, 
because when we talk about media literacy, as you mentioned, right now, for understanding uh, each other worldwide, we are thinking about media wisdom. We think that media literacy is not enough for our life. We need media insight, media wisdom. And maybe sometimes, maybe in person, maybe if I have uh, opportunity to come to India or you uh, uh, come to Iran, we can talk more about this. And let me tell the students for the final sentence that uh, India as a very rich and very deep background, cultural background mm -hmm. is much more responsible. Yes. Don't think that everything is finished. Thank mm -hmm. you, Professor. And uh, I'm really proud to be among you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, sir. On behalf of Media School DME, I extend my sincere thanks to Dr. Mohsin for his time and conducting this wonderful session. I thank management and leadership team of DME, Professor Amrish Saxena and Dr. Shushmita Bala for inviting Dr. Mohsin. I thank technical team, production team for making this session flawless and smooth. My sincere gratitude to the students and all the participants for making the session interactive and lively. Thank you so much. The first impression that comes to our mind about any college, tall buildings, big classrooms, large lobby areas, thick books, IT labs, assignments, class tests, and projects, nothing besides that. Every hour, minute, second spent here help us carving and shaping our persona, cultivating innovative mindsets for the challenging world. Learning is a lifelong process. Sharing knowledge, inculcating values of life, spark the innovative horizons of mind. Fun and frolic is the nature of every nook and corner here. A daily dose of thrill, we are sure to get here. <laughs>